All right, we're ready to move on and get our web service running out in Azure. So right now we've got a local connection to the database and in our previous video we were uh, pointing this to Azure. I've removed that and we have changed all these back to local DB and I will show you why here in just a moment. What we want to do first is make sure that everything is working locally. So again, I'm pointed to the local database. The web server is running in the on the local machine. We, we already know we have an instance of the database running at an Azure. And we need to move our web service out there as well and have it use the database that's on Azure. It can't call back into your database typically because of firewall rules and security. You wouldn't want that to happen. All right, so let's just make sure that everything's working okay. And we will bring up uh, DHC here and try a few things out. So we'll fire up our local one, make sure that we can actually get data back. It looks like it seems to be working. And we'll go get all the people with a get, and we just got one record out there. So that all seems to be working fine. So let's close out of this. And let's go to Azure and uh, sign in. Let's go get on our Azure account. So I've got some, because I've, I've tested this, I've got some resources out here already. What you remember is we had a resource group for our database. And there's a resource group out there now for the the web app as well, but um, I'm going to try to remove that, assuming Azure's going to cooperate with me here and come up. Just a little slow tonight. Must be a lot of traffic out there on the internet. So... Uh, See, that's not showing me any resources, which is not good. I kind of think it's not all the way up yet. All right, we'll pause this for just a minute and I'll see if I can figure out what's going on with Azure. back not sure what was going on but uh, I signed out signed back in and everything seems to be fine so um, anyway we have this uh, web apps resource group here I'm not going to remove this I'm just going to continue to use it but you whenever you create or whenever you publish your application to Azure um, that will uh, you'll it'll ask you for a resource group just like it did when we were doing our database Okay, so let's close out of this for right now. And what we want to do then is publish. So under build, you can select publish, and you get to pick where you're going to publish to, and we want to publish to Microsoft Azure Web Apps. And it will ask you to sign in if you haven't done that already. And so we're going to create a new web app out there. Now, because I've used the name already, I'm going to have to come up with a new name. Um, so, I'll try Simple REST Server, but I have a feeling that's already taken, and it warns me and says that's already in use. So, we'll try Simple REST Server 2, and it's, it's happy with that. All right, App Service Plan, we'll create a new one. Actually, let's go back and get our app service. Okay. So Web Apps Resource Group is the name of the resource group, but we'll do a...
So we'll just call it Web Apps Service Plan. Don't worry about the details of these just yet. We'll come back around and talk about these. Uh, which resource group? We're going to put it in a Web Apps Resource Group. Which region do you want to put it in? And you get a pick. We will do West US 2. It doesn't matter. You get a pick where you want it to be. I'll just do West US. And don't worry about the database. Leave that alone. And we'll do a Create. So what that's going to do is contact Azure and set everything up so that we're ready to publish. And it's going to publish under Simple REST Server 2 dot azurewebsites.net. That's going to be your URL that you're going to use. So it's in the process of doing the creating right now. And once it's done that, we'll be able to publish our code up to that server. It's just taking it a minute here. All right, now these settings are the settings that are used to actually do the publishing. So if you were to go up on Azure, you'd find that there's a password up there associated with this. So the first thing we'll do is just validate the connection and make sure we're connected to Azure OK. That'll take a few moments. And then we're going to go ahead and hit the Publish button. So it's going to now take our web application and it's going to build it. You'll notice it's building and it will deploy it up to Azure. So it's a really nice feature of Visual Studio. You don't have to go through some other tool or the command line to get things moved up into Azure. There's tight integration with Azure and Visual Studio, which makes this really, really seamless. So it's working on getting all our files built and added out there to Azure. That's what it's doing right now. And every time you make changes here, all you do is just go hit the Publish button, and it'll come up with the screen. Just hit Publish. You don't have to do that setup again once you've done it once. So we're still adding files out there. This will go a little faster once you've done it once because it won't have to push everything up there. It'll just take the files that have changed. So it's still working through the files that it needs to push up to Azure. We're still building here. And now what it's going to do is go ahead and fire up the page at simplerestserver2.azurewebsites.net. So there's nothing here yet, it says. That's because we don't have anything on that path. It would be API person and one. Now when we do that what we'll see is an error has occurred and the reason for that is because remember we just published to Azure a web application that is looking for a database on 127.0.0.1 which is localhost and that's not allowed on Azure. You're not going to be able to go to localhost. So um, what do we do? We already took our Azure web or our Azure database connection string out for the database that's up there. So we have the web app up there and we have the database up there, but the web app is trying to go to the local host, which it can't find. It can't reach back to your machine and it can't find it on the Azure machine. So we need to go fix that. And here's how we're going to do it. So what we're going to do is go over here to the, you'll notice here's the different things that have been added. So this Simple REST Server 2 is the new one that we just added. Simple REST Server 1 is the one I already had up there. And um, it's also, this is the actual app service that it added here. And so what I'm going to do, the very first thing I'm going to do is go to my database. So follow along with me here. I'm going to go to my database. I'm going to go to the properties on the database. And I'm going to copy the connection string. So down here, I'm going to copy this connection string right here. Okay, so we'll copy that. We'll go back over here to the resources. And we'll go to the web app right here, the app service, Simple REST Server 2. And this has application settings. And application settings has a lot of different options here, and I'm not going to go through these specifically. What I want to do is focus on the connection strings. 
down here. So we are going to add a new connection string and we're going to add it under this key, local DB. So why am I picking local DB? Well, that's what it's known as in this app configuration setting. So here's what's going to happen. It's going to scan your, config, your, your web config file. It's going to look for this key, local DB, and it's going to replace the connection string, because I'm configuring this under connection strings, with the connection string that I configure on Azure. So this is really awesome, because what this means is, when I'm running locally, I can leave this connection string the way it is, and when I publish up to Azure, because the setting is on the app server, it will actually say, oh, I need to replace local DB with this other connection string that points to Azure. So it makes me able to locally test and still deploy and have everything work up there. So I've got that value copied and all I'm going to do is paste. And I'm going to say that this is a MySQL database. And right up here at the top, I'm going to hit save. And that's all there is to it. So now when the web app runs, I don't have to make any code changes. I don't have to republish because it's using the same configuration information. So now I should be able to go to my Azure instance. I've got some of those saved out there. I'm going to change this to two and I'm going to say go get me all the people. And there you go. That came from Azure. That did not come from my local database. And we can go after specific ones. And we can post new ones. So all of our functions should be working fine. And if I go back and look at all the people, Oops, let's do a get. And there they are. So um, it works great. And now everything's up in the cloud. So uh, the web app is up there and it's hitting the database that is on the Azure system as well. And you, those can be in different locations up in Azure. It's all in the cloud. And it works great. So the next thing we'll be doing is looking at how we secure this now that we have it out on the public internet. So that'll be the next thing that we work on. And I hope this was useful for you. And uh, please watch my other videos. Thanks.